At this point, most of us have established that we wanna live a life with more freedom and autonomy than just doing the nine to five in one location until we hit retirement age at 65, 70, and then, you know, start living some sort of other life after that. But I really want to highlight that there are different ways to achieve this freedom and autonomy throughout your life, beyond say, just quitting your nine to five tomorrow to be a content creator. Although of course, that is one route that people take. So let's get into some of these models from the more traditional routes to the less traditional routes and some of the limitations and things to consider about each of them. So the first model we're going to consider is the remote worker, right? You are a salaried full-time employee, but you have the ability to work from anywhere in the world. Now, if we're talking about autonomy and freedom, well, you now have geographical freedom, which wasn't the case when you had, say, a job in one location, which means you can then use that geographical autonomy to, you know, see the world, perhaps even live in a place where the cost of living is a lot less than what you make, and therefore, you know, have a higher quality or standard of living, put more money into savings, and just get more for your, your pound, your dollar, or whatever it is you get paid in. And in general, we start moving towards more autonomy and control over our life. So what's the requirement? of this model? Well, it is that you have the skills and experience in a particular industry or job that can be done from anywhere in the world. And so I work in tech and I have been a remote worker, I'm working from Portugal, from Italy, different parts of the UK, different parts of London. And it's because I have skills in a particular job or that relate to a job that I can do from anywhere. But of course, this isn't the most autonomous position to be in, right? And so let's talk about some of the limitations of this model. You're still bound by working hours. And if you want to request time off to do something, you have to ask your manager and you're only limited to a certain amount. I mean, in the UK and Europe, I think we have a lot more than even in the US, right? But even still, if you have 20 days, which is like well, a month's worth of holiday, so you have a month of the year that you're allowed to kind of go about and do your own thing, and you have to work out, is that enough for me? And does that combined with remote work give me enough autonomy for right now to keep going? Or is that not? Another limitation is your earning potential, right? Like if you're a salaried permanent member of staff, then if it says that you're gonna make 50K a year, you're gonna make 50K a year. Yeah, you might add on some you know, overtime and so forth if that's appropriate for your, your job, but as a whole, that is what you are going to make. And just because you input more or you do more at work doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be remunerated for it. And then the final limitation we're gonna talk about in this model is the time zones. Like, yes, it's one thing if your, your company is based in London, but if you wanna work in Colombia, does that work in terms of time zones and when you have to be up and when you have to be accessible for meetings and calls and stuff like that? So again, you are still bound by that particular job and even to an extent location as it comes to time. Okay, so let's talk about the next working model. And this is that of the contractor or the consultant and dotting mini retirements throughout your year. I believe I first came across this concept when I was reading the four hour work week a few years ago. And it's basically the idea that as a contractor, right, you will have say a six month contract, a one year contract, however long you sign for, three months. And right? so you work that concentrated period, often at a rate that is higher than a permanent employee because you don't get all these other benefits and, and so forth. And then between contracts, you're free to do what you want with your time. So you can, if you want, dot mini retirements throughout the year. You know, I know people who say work six months, then they take three to six months off traveling, exploring, building out their own side hustles, their own businesses, being a creative, doing all these other sorts of things in their mini retirement periods. So again, we've now got a model that's not, okay, I work all this time and then retire at 65 and 70. My mini retirements are dotted throughout the year. And now in terms of requirements, you do still need to have a skill that people want, that people want in a contractor way, because not all jobs or skills people want to access through contractors. Some people really want permanent employees, and I think that's a whole thing in itself, why the the number of reasons for that. Effectively, there has to be appetite for you as a contractor in that industry. So what are some of the limitations of this model? I guess the first we can talk about is the stability. So you have less stability as a contractor as you do as a permanent employee. Although with all the layoffs and things going on, people will debate that all day long. But in theory, right, if an employer wants to get rid of you or anything like that on a permanent, you have to go through certain processes, certain you know contractual obligations and stuff like that. Um, as a contractor, if you come to the end of your six month contract, they don't have to keep you on. They may say, thank you for your time. You've been great, but bye. You then need to acquire another contract in a suitable amount of time to balance and work with your finances. So there is a degree of less stability in this model, but again, you now have more autonomy and freedom in those chunks of mini retirements and also who you choose to work with at different periods of your life. Okay, so now the next model is the 100% freelancer or self-employed individual. So here we've taken autonomy and freedom to the next step because effectively you are your boss, all right? You are your own boss, which means you can control the type of work you do, when you do that work, where you do that work. Now, like all things, it's subject to demand, 
but you have far more control over your time, your finances and your location here. What this means is you can choose to work when you want to work, find different ways of making more passive or should we say less active forms of income. That means you don't have to be at your desk 24 seven or you know eight hours a day. Or you can start to craft a financial structure that works for you and what you want to do. Perhaps you're somebody who likes to use the mornings to work out like from 8 a.m to 12, you, you need that time to work out or you need that time to use creative pursuits. You need that time for something else. Well, then you can structure your day, your job, your freelance work into a time that that is blocked off. And I work say from 12 till eight o'clock in the evening where that's optimized for that. So you can start to structure things that work with you with all this autonomy that you have. Okay, so let's talk about some of the high level requirements of this model then. For starters, you need a skill or a product or a service that people want to pay you for and also an ability to market that, right? Because your, your income is dependent on getting people in, in the door effectively to either purchase your product, purchase your service, you need to be able to market your skills, right? In the other models, the company or the organization may handle that sort of stuff, getting people in the door, getting customers, getting that sort of stuff. But now it's up to you. So you have to either balance that yourself or outsource that to other individuals. It also requires that you are able to manage both your personal finances and your business finances, right? Before you just get a paycheck and you just, you handle that how you want. Now you're going to be juggling both your personal finances and the finances of the business. And so you need to be able to understand how these two are mainly separate and sometimes how they overlap and how those decisions can be made in to separate and segment your mind saying, just because I do this with my personal money, doesn't mean this is what happens with the business. And finally, it's a high degree of time management. Like I said, in that model where you decide what you wanna do with your day, that's fantastic. But at the end of the day, if you've structured your time, you're managing your time in a way that means you're not making money, you're going to be broke. And so good luck living this life of mini retirements or you know autonomy with no money in a world where money is you know it's the value system we use so those are some of the requirements and things you have to think about and in terms of limitations and stability well we've now got less stable right like on one side you don't have that money coming in but on the other side you can potentially make as much money as you want, right? Whether you're going to be a content creator, whether you're going to sell, you know, I see lots of jewelry being sold online, or you're gonna open up like a, your own advertising services, your own marketing agency, whatever it's going to be, you can, if you play your cards right, you know, get the information and the experiences and execute, surpass any contract or permanent job that you can get in terms of money and use that then to fuel and, you know, live the life that you want. And the final model we're going to look at is the FIRE model, which is financial independence retire early. And you may or may not have heard of this movement, but it's been around for a few years now. This is the idea that you kind of work hard in a really concentrated period of time to create an investment or like a nest egg from which you can live off the returns or you can live off the the kind of interest. And there are different routes even in this that people take. Some people lower their expenses and they keep them low. They plan on when they retire early at say age 25, age 35, age 45, even 55, they're going to keep their expenses low. However, other people know that they want a higher quality of life. Like they want to be able to do private jets or, okay, private jets is too far, but <laughs> they want to be able to make certain decisions and not have to think about it. In which case, they may decide then that they're going to spend more time accumulating their wealth so they can accumulate more, so that when they do retire early, they have more access to funds. Now, in terms of requirements, this requires all the other kind of things, like you have a skill or experience or services that people want to pay you for, and that they're paying you enough that this is an actual possible route. Like if you're making perhaps 10 pound an hour, then the reality of this route is going to be a lot less than somebody who's making 50 pound an hour, right? And has a skill and access to money or that even has businesses or multiple streams of income that are feeding into this. And you also need to be able to make sacrifices earlier to get to that retirement quicker. So like, if you're somebody who's like, I wanna live the best, best, best life now, and kind of just like average that over the years, that is one thing and that's an option in itself. Some people, however, are like, I'm willing to like swallow the frog. Is that the saying? Bite the bullet and like maybe make sacrifices now and like really grind now and just focus on this and then get to age 35 and be like, everything's optional after this. And I think fire is very interesting because a lot of people actually do this, but they don't stop working completely. Like they may retire early, but all that means is then work is optional. So if they decide to create this thing or build this business or create this digital product or offer this service, everything after that, it's not a necessity to live, right? You are financially independent at that point, but you may still continue to do it out of interest 
out of passion or because actually you decide, mm, I've been kind of relaxing on the beach for a while now and I'm, I'm gonna get my hands into something else. So those are the four models that I wanted to talk about. And I think they will resonate with different people. Different people have different wants from life, different requirements for stability, different interests, right? And ways they want to structure their lives. And so I think between these and even in combinations, you'll find something that works for you. That means you don't have to wait until 70 to start living life. I'll see you in the next video.